with Ambata. Translated by Bhikkhu Sujato. So I have heard. At one time the Buddha was wandering in the land of the Kosalans, together with a large Sangha of around five hundred mendicants, when he arrived at a village of the Kosalan Brahmins named Icharnangala. He stayed in a forest near Icharnangala. Now at that time the Brahmin Pokarasati was living in Ukatar. It was a crown property given by King Pasanadi of Kosala, teeming with living creatures, full of hay, wood, water and grain, a royal endowment of the highest quality. Pokarasati heard, It seems the ascetic Gotama, a Sakyan gone forth from a Sakyan family, has arrived at Ichanangala and is staying in a forest nearby. He has this good reputation. That blessed one is perfected, a fully awakened Buddha, accomplished in knowledge and conduct, holy, knower of the world, supreme guide for those who wish to train, teacher of gods and humans, awakened, blessed. He has realised with his own insight this world, with its gods, Maras and Brahmas, this population with its ascetics and Brahmins, gods and humans, and he makes it known to others. He teaches Dhamma that's good in the beginning, good in the middle, and good in the end, meaningful and well phrased. And he reveals a spiritual practice that's entirely full and pure. It's good to see such perfected ones. Now at that time, Pokarasati had a student named Ambata. He was one who recited and remembered the hymns and had mastered the three Vedas, together with their vocabularies, ritual, phonology and etymology, and the testament as fifth. He knew philology and grammar, and was well versed in cosmology and the marks of a great man. He had been authorised as a master in his own teacher's scriptural heritage of the three Vedas, with the words, What I know, you know, and what you know, I know. Then Pokarasati addressed Ambata, Dear Ambata, the ascetic Gotama, a Sakyan gone forth from a Sakyan family, has arrived at Ichanangala and is staying in a forest nearby. It's good to see such perfected ones. Please, dear Ambata, go to the ascetic Gotama and find out whether or not he lives up to his reputation. Through you I shall learn about Master Gotama. But, sir, how shall I find out whether or not the ascetic Gotama lives up to his reputation? Dear Ambata, the thirty-two marks of a great man have been handed down in our hymns. A great man who possesses these has only two possible destinies, no other. If he stays at home, he becomes a king, a wheel-turning monarch, a just and principled king. His dominion extends to all four sides, he achieves stability in the country, and he possesses the seven treasures. He has the following seven treasures, the wheel, the elephant, the horse, the jewel, the woman, the treasurer, and the counsellor as the seventh treasure. He has over a thousand sons who are valiant and heroic, crushing the armies of his enemies. After conquering this land, girt by sea, he reigns by principle, without rod or sword. But if he goes forth from the lay life to homelessness, he becomes a perfected one, a fully awakened Buddha, who draws back the veil from the world. But dear Ambata, I am the one who gives the hymns, and you are the one who receives them. Yes, sir, replied Ambata. He got up from his seat, bowed and respectfully circled Pokarasati, keeping him to his right. He mounted a mare-drawn chariot and, together with several students, set out for the forest near Ichanangala. He went by carriage as far as the terrain allowed, then descended and entered the monastery on foot. At that time, several mendicants were walking meditation in the open air. Then the student Ambata went up to those mendicants and said, Gentlemen, where is Master Gotama at present? For we have come here to see him. Then those mendicants thought, This Ambata is from a well-known family, and he is the pupil of the well-known Brahmin Pokarasati. 
The Buddha won't mind having a discussion together with such gentlemen. They said to Ambata, Ambata, that's his dwelling with the door closed. Approach it quietly without hurrying. Go on to the porch, clear your throat, and knock with the latch. The Buddha will open the door. So he approached the Buddha's dwelling and knocked, and the Buddha opened the door. Ambata and the other students entered the dwelling. The other students exchanged greetings with the Buddha, and when the greetings and polite conversation were over, sat down to one side. But while the Buddha was sitting, Ambata spoke some polite words or other while walking around or standing. So the Buddha said to him, Ambata, is this how you hold a discussion with elderly and senior Brahmins, the teachers of teachers, walking around or standing while I'm sitting, speaking some polite words or other? No, Master Gotama, for it is proper for one Brahmin to converse with another while both are walking, standing, sitting or lying down. But as to these shavelings, fake ascetics, riffraff, black spawn from the feet of our kinsmen, I converse with them as I do with Master Gotama. But Ambata, you must have come here for some purpose. You should focus on that. Though this Ambata is unqualified, he thinks he's qualified. What is that but lack of qualifications? When he said this, Ambata became angry and upset with the Buddha because of being described as unqualified. He even attacked and bad-mouthed the Buddha himself, saying, The ascetic Gotama will be worsted. He said to the Buddha, Master Gotama, the Sakyan clan are rude, Harsh, touchy, and argumentative. Riff-raff they are, and riff-raff they remain. They don't honour, respect, revere, worship, or venerate Brahmins. It is neither proper nor appropriate that the Sakyans, riff-raff that they are, don't honour, respect, revere, worship, or venerate Brahmins. And that's how Ambata denigrated the Sakyans with the word riff-raff for the first time. But Ambata, how have the Sakyans wronged you? This one time, Master Gotama, my teacher, the Brahmin Pokkarasati, went to Kapilavatu on some business. He approached the Sakyans in their meeting hall. Now at that time several Sakyans and Sakyan princes were sitting on high seats, poking each other with their fingers, giggling and playing together. In fact, they even presumed to giggle at me, and didn't invite me to a seat. It is neither proper nor appropriate that the Sakyans, riffraff that they are, don't honour, respect, revere, worship, or venerate Brahmins. And that's how Ambata denigrated the Sakyans with the word riffraff for the second time. Even a little quail Ambata speaks as she likes in her own nest. Kapilawatu is the Sakyans' own place, Ambata, it's not worthy of the venerable Ambata to lose his temper over such a small thing. Master Gotama, there are these four castes, aristocrats, Brahmins, merchants and workers. Three of these castes, aristocrats, merchants and workers, in fact succeed only in serving the Brahmins. It is neither proper nor appropriate that the Sakyans, riffraff that they are, don't honour, respect, revere, worship, or venerate Brahmins. And that's how Ambata denigrated the Sakyans with the word riffraff for the third time. Then it occurred to the Buddha, This Ambata puts the Sakyans down too much by calling them riffraff. Why don't I ask him about his own clan? So the Buddha said to him, What is your clan, Ambata? I am a Kanhayana, Master Gotama. But recollecting the ancient name and clan of your mother and father, the Sakyans were the children of the masters, while you're descended from the son of a female bond-servant of the Sakyans. But the Sakyans claim King Okaka as their grandfather. Once upon a time, King Okaka, wishing to divert the royal succession to the son of his most beloved queen, banished the elder princes from the realm. Okaka Mukka, Karakanda, Hatinika, and Sinisura. 
They made their home beside a lotus pond on the slopes of the Himalayas, where there was a large teak grove. For fear of diluting their lineage, they slept with their own sisters. Then King Okaka addressed his ministers and counsellors. Where, sirs, have the princes settled now? Sire, there is a lotus pond on the slopes of the Himalayas by a large grove of Sarka, the teak tree. They settled there. For fear of diluting their lineage, they are sleeping with their own sisters. Then Ambata, King Okaka, was inspired to exclaim, The princes are indeed Sakyans. The princes are indeed the best Sakyans. From that day on, the Sakyans were recognised, and he was their founder. Now King Okaka had a female bond servant named Disa. She gave birth to a black boy. When he was born, Black Boy said, Wash me, Mum, bathe me, get this filth off me, I will be useful for you. Whereas these days, when people see goblins, they know them as goblins. In those days they knew goblins as Black Boys. They said, He spoke as soon as he was born, a Black Boy is born, a goblin is born. From that day on, the Kanhayanas were recognised and he was their founder. That's how, recollecting the ancient name and clan of your mother and father, the Sakyans were the children of the masters, while you're descended from the son of a female bond servant of the Sakyans. When he said this, those students said to him, Master Gotama, please don't put Ambata down too much by calling him the son of a bond servant. He's well born a gentleman, learned, a good speaker, and astute. He's capable of having a dialogue with Master Gotama about this. So the Buddha said to them, Well, student, if you think that Ambata is ill-born, not a gentleman, uneducated, a poor speaker, witless, and not capable of having a dialogue with me about this, then leave him aside and you can have a dialogue with me. But if you think that he's well-born, a gentleman, learned, a good speaker, astute, and capable of having a dialogue with me about this, then you should stand aside and let him have a dialogue with me. He is capable of having a dialogue. We will be silent and let Ambata have a dialogue with Master Gotama. So the Buddha said to Ambata, Well, Ambata, there's a legitimate question that comes up. You won't like it, but you ought to answer anyway. If you don't answer, but dodge the issue, remain silent, or simply leave, your head will explode into seven pieces right here. What do you think, Ambata? According to what you have heard from elderly and senior Brahmins, the teachers of teachers, what is the origin of the Kanhayanas, and who is their founder? When he said this, Ambata kept silent. For a second time the Buddha put the question, and for a second time Ambata kept silent. So the Buddha said to him, Answer now, Ambata, now is not the time for silence. If someone fails to answer a legitimate question when asked three times by the Buddha, their head explodes into seven pieces there and then. Now at that time the spirit Vajrapani, holding a massive iron spear, burning, blazing and glowing, stood in the sky above Ambata, thinking, If this Ambata doesn't answer when asked a third time, I'll blow his head into seven pieces there and then. And both the Buddha and Ambata could see Vajrapani. Ambata was terrified, shocked and awestruck. Looking to the Buddha for shelter, protection and refuge, he sat down close by the Buddha and said, What did you say? Please repeat the question. What do you think, Ambata? According to what you have heard from elderly and senior Brahmins, the teachers of teachers, what is the origin of the Kanhayanas and who is their founder? I have heard, Master Gotama, that it is just as you say. That's the origin of the Kanhayanas and that's who their founder is. When he said this, those students made an uproar. It turns out Ambata is ill-born, not a gentleman, son of a Sakyan bondservant, and that the Sakyans are sons of his masters. 
and it seems that the ascetic Gotama spoke only the truth, though we presumed to rebuke him. Then it occurred to the Buddha, These students put Ambata down too much by calling him the son of a bond servant. Why don't I get him out of this? So the Buddha said to the students, Students, please don't put Ambata down too much by calling him the son of a bond servant. That black boy was an eminent sage. He went to a southern country and memorised the prime spell. Then he approached King Okaka and asked for the hand of his daughter, Madarupi. The king said to him, Who the hell is this son of a bond servant to ask for the hand of my daughter? Angry and upset, he fastened a razor-tipped arrow, but he wasn't able to either shoot it or to relax it. Then the ministers and counsellors approached the sage black boy and said, Spare the king, sir, spare him. The king will be safe, but if he shoots the arrows downwards, there will be an earthquake across the entire realm. Spare the king, sir, and spare the country. Both the king and country will be safe, but if he shoots the arrows upwards, there will be no rain in the entire realm for seven years. Spare the king, sir, spare the country, and let there be rain. Both the king and country will be safe, and the rain will fall, and if the king aims the arrow at the crown prince, he will be safe and untouched. So the ministers said to Okaka, Okaka must aim the arrow at the crown prince. He will be safe and untouched. So King Okaka aimed the arrow at the crown prince, and he was safe and untouched. Then the king was terrified, shocked and awestruck. Scared by the prime punishment, he gave the hand of his daughter Madarupi. Students, please don't put Ambata down too much by calling him the son of a bond servant. That black boy was an eminent sage. Then the Buddha addressed Ambata. What do you think, Ambata? Suppose an aristocrat boy was to sleep with a Brahmin girl and they had a son. Would he receive a seat and water from the Brahmins? He would, Master Gotama. And would the Brahmins feed him at an offering of food for ancestors, an offering of a dish of milk rice, a sacrifice, or a feast for guests? They would. And would the Brahmins teach him the hymns or not? They would. And would he be kept from the women or not? He would not. And would the aristocrats anoint him as king? No, Master Gotama. Why is that? Because his maternity is unsuitable. What do you think, Ambata? Suppose a Brahmin boy was to sleep with an aristocrat girl and they had a son. Would he receive a seat and water from the Brahmins? He would, Master Gotama. And would the Brahmins feed him at an offering of food for ancestors, an offering of a dish of milk rice, a sacrifice, or a feast for guests? They would. And would the Brahmins teach him the hymns or not? They would. And would he be kept from the women or not? He would not. And would the aristocrats anoint him as king? No, Master Gotama. Why is that? Because his paternity is unsuitable. And so, Ambata, the aristocrats are superior and the Brahmins inferior, whether comparing women with women or men with men. What do you think, Ambata? Suppose the Brahmins for some reason were to shave a Brahmin's head, inflict him with a sack of ashes and banish him from the nation or the city. Would he receive a seat and water from the Brahmins? No, Master Gotama. And would the Brahmins feed him an offering of food for ancestors, an offering of a dish of milk rice, a sacrifice, or a feast for guests? No, Master Gotama. And would the Brahmins teach him the hymns or not? No, Master Gotama. And would he be kept from the women or not? He would be. What do you think, Ambata? Suppose the aristocrats for some reason were to shave an aristocrat's head, inflict him with a sack of ashes, and banish him from the nation or the city. Would he receive a seat and water from the Brahmins? He would, Master Gotama. And would the Brahmins feed him at an offering of food for ancestors, an offering of a dish of milk rice, 
a sacrifice or a feast for guests. They would, and would the Brahmins teach him the hymns or not? They would, and would he be kept from the women or not? He would not. At this point, Ambata, that aristocrat has reached rock bottom, with head shaven, inflicted with a sack of ashes, and banished from city or nation. Yet still the aristocrats are superior, and the Brahmins inferior. Brahma Sanankumara also spoke this verse. The aristocrat is best of those people who take clan as the standard, but one accomplished in knowledge and conduct is best of gods and humans. That verse was well sung by Brahma Sanankumara, not poorly sung, well spoken, not poorly spoken, beneficial, not harmful, and it was approved by me. For I also say this, the aristocrat is best of those people who take clan as the standard, but one accomplished in knowledge and conduct is best of gods and humans. End of first section for recitation.